Okay, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to second part of lecture number five. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss the concept of frequency in discrete time, which is a very important topic as uh, the whole theory of Fourier transform and Fourier analysis, in fact, a spectral analysis of discrete time signals lies on this particular uh, part of the lecture. And uh, it's important because uh, it is quite different from the concept of frequency in continuous time signals. Okay, so we will be revisiting the concept of uh, cosine waves in continuous time and cosine waves in discrete time. What you can notice here is that I have used different symbols for omega as well as f frequency. Uh, for continuous time and discrete time and we are talking about continuous time frequency we have used capital symbols capital omega and capital F and when we are using uh, uh, talking about discrete time signal we are using the symbols small omega and small f and this is exactly what your textbook has uh, done so what is the difference between the two the one very important difference lies here that omega naught, capital omega naught, that is continuous time radial frequency, it is radians per second, and continuous time frequency is measured in cycles per second. Whereas when we talk about discrete time signals, discrete time kind of uh, sinusoid, uh, the frequency here, omega naught, is actually measured in radians per sample and this F naught is in cycles per sample. So its unit is different, so it's a bit different, not a bit different, it's quite different from uh, what uh, cosine wave we are talking about here in continuous time and the cosine wave we are talking about discrete time. Actually, we have already uh, seen two differences, uh, two uh, very important differences uh, in the last part of the lecture. But uh, now we will proceed further to see what's uh, going on here. So one thing that we saw in the last part was that discrete time sinusoids whose frequencies are separated by an integral multiple of 2 pi are identical. And this is what we proved uh, in the last part. But uh, one very important thing we should remember here is that the value of this omega naught should lie between minus pi to pi. That is, it is completing a cycle of, a complete cycle from minus pi to pi. So the total cycle is two pi. Yani two pi radians kabar kar raha hai ye omega naught. Isse kam value nahi ho sakti minus pi se aur plus pi se zada value nahi ho sakti. Now, uh, definitely we could ask that Abhito humne baat ki thi pichle lectures mein ke ji sits humare jo speech hai wo kya kehte hai 5 kilohertz tak ja rahi hai aur maari audio jo hai wo 20 kilohertz tak ja rahi hai aur ab hum 20 kilohertz ko chhoad kar sirf pi ke upar a gai hai ye to baut chhoti value hai Okay, so is it a limitation of uh, discrete signals or what? So actually we have to uh, look into the detail and we have to look the dif difference between small omega that is uh, a discrete time frequency and capital omega that is uh, continuous time frequency. So just move further. Uh, if we put uh, 2 pi f naught in place of omega naught, then we can see that f naught should be between 1 upon 2 and minus 1 upon 2. That is the maximum value of f naught can be 1 upon 2 and the minimum value can be minus 1 upon 2. Frequency minus 1 upon 2 se kam nahi ho sakti or 1 upon 2 se zada nahi ho sakti. Again, ye baut chota sa band lag raha hai. So what is it? This is something uh, different. And actually, this is something really very different. Okay. Uh, 
ये सिग्नल हम पहले भी देख चुके हैं दिस इज अ स्पीच सिग्नल वी यूज्ड इन प्रीवियस क्लासेस एंड हियर दिस इज द स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ अवर स्पीच सिग्नल नाउ दिस इज समवट कॉन्ट्रोडिक्टिंग व्हाट आई सेड इन दैट प्रीवियस स्लाइड मैंने कहा कि जी फ्रीक्वेंसी वन अपॉन टू से ज्यादा नहीं हो सकती माइनस वन अपॉन टू से कम नहीं हो सकती लेकिन अगर हम यहां देखें तो फ्रीक्वेंसी अराउंड फाइव थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड तक की वैल्यूज पर जा रही है और इधर इट्स अप टू माइनस फाइव थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड वेल्व सो इफ दिस इज द फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड इट इज गोइंग अप टू फाइव थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड हर्ट्स देन वॉट इज वॉट इज दैट फ्रीक्वेंसी दैट मस्ट बी बिटवीन वन अपॉइंट टू एंड माइनस वन अपॉइंट टू सो देखिए एक चीज तो आपको आंसर इसी से मिल रहा है कि यहां जब मैं लिख रहा हूं फ्रीक्वेंसी तो मैं लिख रहा हूं हर्ट्स ठीक है हर्ट्स इज साइकल्स पर सेकेंड जबकि वहां जिस फ्रीक्वेंसी की बात हमने की है वो है साइकल्स पर सैंपल तो ये साइकिल पर सैंपल क्या होता है ये हमें देखना पड़ेगा सो लेट्स मूव फर्दर देखिए जी अभी हमने बात की कि ओमेगा नॉट की वैल्यू जो है वो माइनस पाई से पाई के दरमियान होनी चाहिए होती है एंड एफ नॉट की वैल्यू माइनस वन अपॉइंट टू से वन अपॉइंट टू होती है सो बेसिकली दिस ओमेगा नॉट इज इक्वल टू कैपिटल ओमेगा ओवर ओमेगा एस लाइक वाइज वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एफ नॉट it is f over fs f is the actual frequency of the signal and fs is the sampling frequency so actually this f not is not the frequency we are usually talking about this is a ratio of the frequency with respect to the sampling frequency fs and uh, it is also called normalized frequency why normalized because just a range of 1 minus half to 1 upon 2 so it is also called normalized frequency so when we are talking about capital omega it is the uh, normal frequency we use in the continuous time but uh, when we are talking about small omega not uh, it is normalized uh, uh, angular frequency likewise when we are talking about capital f it is the actual frequency of the signal as we consider it in the continuous time signal but when we are talking about small f we are talking about normalized frequency where the original frequency has been normalized with respect to the sampling frequency what does it mean it means that the highest rate of oscillation is attained in a discrete time sinusoid at omega is equal to plus minus pi yani pi per minus pi per aur usi taraf agar aap frequency small f ki baat kare to 1 upon 2 ya minus 1 upon 2 par hame highest frequency milegi uske baad aap agar mazid frequency badhana shuru karenge to jaise humne shuru mein baat ki thi कि जी अगर हमारे पास ओमेगा नॉट था जो कि पाई से माइनस पाई के दरमियान था अब हर टू पाई रेडियंस के बाद इट विल स्टार्ट रिपीटिंग इट्सल्फ इट विल स्टार्ट रिपीटिंग इट्सल्फ तो वही फ्रीक्वेंसीज आपको मिलना शुरू करेंगी इसका मतलब क्या है कि आपको जितनी वेरिएशन मिलनी है जितनी इंफॉर्मेशन चाहिए वो सारी की सारी इंफॉर्मेशन ओमेगा इज इक्वल टू माइनस पाई से पाई के दरमियान मिल जाएगी या दूसरे लफ्जों में एफ इज इक्वल टू माइनस हाफ से हाफ के दरमियान मिल जाएगी उसके बाद जो भी चीज है वो इसी स्पेक्ट्रम की रिपीटिशन है इसका मतलब अगर हम बात करते हैं स्पेक्ट्रम की कि जी एक लिमिट है इसकी माइनस पाई और दूसरी लिमिट है इसकी प्लस पाई और हमारा स्पेक्ट्रम इस माइनस पाई से प्लस पाई के दरमियान में है 
तो इसके बाद स्पेक्ट्रम एग्जिस्ट करेगा लेकिन वो इसी की रिपीटिशन होंगी तो अगर जीरो पर हमें पीक मिल रही थी तो यहां वी विल गेट अनदर पीक एट टू पाई लाइक वाइज वी विल गेट अनदर पीक हेयर एट माइनस टू पाई सो इट विल कीप ऑन रिपीटिंग इट सेल्फ इट मीन्स दैट इट मीन्स दैट the spectrum of a discrete time signal is periodic the spectrum of discrete time signal is periodic minus pi se pi ke darmiyan agar hum omega ki terms mein baat kar rahe hain iski jo information hogi wohi information phir पाई से थ्री पाए और थ्री पाई से फाइव पाए और माइनस पाई से माइनस थ्री पाए और माइनस थ्री पाई से माइनस फाइव पाए तक रिपीट होती रहेगी उसमें कोई तब्दीली नहीं आएगी सो इफ वी हैव दिस इंफॉर्मेशन वी कैन जस्ट डिस्कार्ड द रेस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स ओके सो यहां से भी हमें एक बात पता लगती है जो हम पहले भी देख चुके हैं वो तो क्या है दिस इज पाई ओके दिस इज माइनस पाई के फ्रीक्वेंसी स्मॉल एफ इज वन अपॉइंट टू एंड हेयर इट इज माइनस वन अपॉइंट टू and as i told you that uh this is a normalized frequency that is it is actually f over fs theek hai iska matlab kya hua <coughs> iska matlab ye hua ke hamara jo spectrum hai usme frequencies माइनस एफ एस बाय टू से लेकर एफ एस बाय टू तक होती है ठीक है एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर एफ एस को ट्वाइस से ज्यादा ट्वाइस ऑफ द मैक्सिमम फ्रीक्वेंसी से ज्यादा होना चाहिए तो ऐसी सूरत में हमें कंप्लीट एक साइकिल मिल जाएगा और बाकी साइकिल्स की हमें जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी uh that's all for the second part of the lecture okay uh let's solve a few problems to have a better understanding of the problem so first example is the example 1.4.1 from your textbook we have two signals x1t is equal to uh cos 2 pi 10t means the frequency here is 10 and uh, the second signal is cos 2 pi 50 t that is the frequency here is 50 and both of the signals are being sampled at a uh, sampling frequency of 40 hertz and what we have to do we have to see uh, ke jo discrete time continue uh, discrete time cosine wave banegi wo kya hogi in dono ke case mein so let's uh, see uh we know that uh, when we convert from continuous to discrete uh this thing 2 pi this becomes f over fs so f is 10 in the first ex uh, example and fs is 40 so we have 2 pi 10 over 40 which is simply uh Two ones are two, two twos are four. We get cos pi by two n. Uh, likewise, if we see the second signal, we have two pi f over f s. Uh, which becomes two ones are two, two twos are four. 
So it is equal to cos 5 pi by 2 n. So they appear to be different, but if you see here, this is a circle. What a chess circle is it? Let's make another Okay. This angle is 0, or you can say uh, 2 pi as well, 360 degrees. Then this is pi by 2 then 2 pi by through 2 that is pi okay and then 3 pi by 2 and then 4 pi by 2 that is 2 pi and then this is 5 by 2 pi by 2 so actually pi by 2 and 5 pi by 2 are same. So if we sample a signal of cosine wave of uh, frequency 10 hertz and another sine wave at a frequency 50 hertz, both at sam we sample at 40 hertz, they will appear same after sampling. Okay, then the next question it has a few parts. Uh, first, we have a signal x a t is equal to 3 cos 100 pi t. That is, omega here is 100 pi. Determine the max minimum sampling rate to avoid aliasing. We know that minimum sampling rate should be uh, at uh, greater than twice of the maximum frequency. So, we have to say that what is the frequency here? It's simple. Omega is 100 pi, which means 2 pi f is equal to 100 pi, which means f is equal to 100 pi divided by 2 pi, which is equal to 50 hertz. So the signal actually is of 50 hertz. And if it is 50 hertz, double this frequency will be 100 hertz. That is, it should be sampled at a frequency greater than 100 hertz. Uh, okay, the next part is that if we sample the same signal at a sampling frequency of 200 hertz, how would the signal will appear to us, the discrete signal? So it's simple, uh, x is, xn is equal to a cos 2 pi f over fs. So 2 pi f was 100 pi divided by fs is 200. So we just get pi n by 2. Okay, and now we have the same signal uh, with the frequency 50 hertz. Uh, and now it's being sampled at a much lesser frequency of 75 hertz in comparison to 20, 200 hertz in the last example. So it's definitely not greater than twice of the maximum frequency here. It is even uh, uh, less than twice of the maximum frequency. So we know in advance that there will be aliasing. We will not be getting the actual frequency here but what would be this frequency we have to see okay xan is equal to 3 cos uh, omega 2 pi f over fs right 2 pi f over fs so it is 25 threes are 75 25 four are 100 we have 4 pi over 3 n so this is it but this is not the final answer why not because we know that our spectrum should lie our frequency should lie between minus pi to pi that is minus 180 degrees to plus 180 degrees 
but this 4 pi by 3 is uh, uh, 60 into 4 that is 240 degrees which is greater than uh, 180 so in such cases what we have to do we have to add or subtract uh, uh, 2 pi from this to get uh, some value which is between minus pi and pi so here we can do it uh, 3 cos Four by by three minus two by n, and now this four pi by three minus two pi is equal to. Three cos minus two n pi by three, and because cos minus theta is equal to cos theta, so the final answer will simply uh, be three cos two n pi by three.